Good afternoon. My name is Greer Akebach, and I am the Executive Director of Friends of Charlottesville Downtown. Welcome to the very first episode of the Downtown Spotlight a web show bringing you conversations from downtown business, leader, business owners, community leaders, and event organizers. The downtown mall is among the most important eight blocks in the entire region, and it is our aim to bring you the positive stories happening in this community. We'll bring you in-depth interviews and behind-the-scenes look from your favorite places in town. Today, we will be joined by the Assistant Director of Economic Development, Matt Johnson, Ryan Becklin, owner of Botanical Fair, and Andrea Jacobs, festival organizer for Seville Sabroso. And our first guest, Matt Johnson. Welcome, Matt. Thank you for having me, Greer. First guest, no place to go but up, right? We're thrilled. Thank you so much for being here. So Matt, you're relatively new to Charlottesville. I think you've been here just about around a year. Um, tell us a little bit about the Office of Economic Development in Charlottesville um, and the role that you play there. Sure, happy to do that. So the Office of Economic Development, I tell everybody it's sort of that place where local government meets the business community. Uh, we're really sort of that intersection of those two larger groups. Um, we have a staff uh, that's set up that sort of covers a wide range of different things. We have a director, Chris Engel, uh, myself. We have a workforce uh, development program manager. We have an entrepreneur program specialist. We have our admin support, uh, Trish, that keeps us all pulled together. Uh, and then we have a uh, position that's responsible for maintaining the facilities and overseeing the parking because there's some uh, public parking that we have, especially here in the downtown area that falls under the management of our office. So we really try to engage with businesses um, however we can to help them. At its core, our mission is to grow and diversify the business community here in the city of Charlottesville. That's a fantastic way to describe it. And I thought I knew a lot about it, but you've told me things in the last 30 seconds about your office that I didn't know. So obviously it's a lot more than just the downtown mall. Um, you're covering many things for the entire city. Um, I do happen to know that you are the liaison to the downtown mall businesses. What kind of resources and support can, can those businesses come to you for? Sure. Um, really, I tell all the businesses that I talk with, whether they're in downtown, whether they're not um, outside of that, but in the city, I tell them, if you're not sure where to start, you can always start with our office. Feel free to contact me. A lot of what we do is we connect businesses uh, with the resources that they need in order to be as successful as possible. Sometimes that's putting them in touch with... Uh, a group like the Small Business Development Center that really strives to, to help small businesses here in our community. They're under the umbrella of the SBA. Um, sometimes it's connecting them with some of our workforce development partners to make sure that we're helping them with the talent pipeline that they need um, to fulfill the openings that they have, positions that they need in order to be able to grow their business. Um, sometimes it's a matter of trying to help them out with um, something that's more of a logistics concern, right? They're trying to get through a city process. Maybe it's permitting. Um, they they want to see if it's possible to do something in a location that they're either at or, more importantly, it's a location they're looking at maybe growing into and they're like, can I do the type of business that I do in that location? We like to make sure we get them connected with our zoning folks, um, our codes compliance folks, to make sure that everything is lined up beforehand. Um, Simple things like, hey, I've got uh, issues with something that's wrong with the sidewalk right here. You know, we can help them through that process of reporting it through our online portal and, uh, and really just sort of check up on that to try to get things like that addressed as well. And then any other concerns that they have, we try to make sure that we're relaying those to the appropriate people uh, within city government or other outside things. Sometimes it's a state thing. We work with local uh, elected officials, state elected officials to share concerns that the business community has. So any number of things along those lines, they can always start with us and we try to do whatever we can ourselves and it, whatever we can't, we try to make sure to give them sort of that warm handoff to a resource that can help them. That's fantastic. You're covering such a wide breadth of things in your office. You mentioned one thing I wanted to follow up on. There's an, there's an online portal. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? 
There is. Um, you can go um, go to the City of Charlottesville website, and uh, there should be a link at the top where you can go and click on the portal. Um, you can report things like um, if there's an issue with the sidewalk, um, you're, you see an issue with trash, um, you think that something needs to be addressed, if there's a, a stoplight or something like that that's not functioning, a street light wow. that's not functioning like it should, um, those things can then be tracked um, internal in the city system so we can have, you know, a good idea of how the response is happening and where we, everything sits in that particular process. Wow, that, that's such an amazing resource. Do you, and that's on the Office of Economic Development website or on the city's website? No, just go to the city's website. Just okay. go to uh, www.charlottesville.gov and you can uh, do a search for the portal and it'll pop it right up for you. That's really amazing. So everyone listening at home, businesses, community members, make sure you go there if you have any questions, questions for the city. While we're talking about the Office of Economic Development and all the ways they're supporting the downtown community, I want to make sure to highlight the ways that they're supporting Friends of Charlottesville downtown. So Friends of Charlottesville has a MOU, a, a, a written formal agreement with um, the Office of Economic Development. They are our point of contact in the city um, and receive a lot of support, primarily for marketing activities related to downtown. So some examples of that in the last year are we collaborated with um, Economic Development to create a new website and a new interactive map online that where you can look up over a thousand businesses in the downtown community. Um, we collaborated on new wayfinding signs and we're working right now on some logistics um, for the brand new coming soon holiday lights on the downtown mall. So we're very thankful to economic development and the city for all of that support they give us in addition to all the things they're doing in the community. Um, the list goes on and on, right? Space for the downtown train and um, other marketing opportunities, things like that. So we, uh, we appreciate all that very much, Matt. Yeah, I think it's important to point out for those that are not familiar, um, and I know that I'm relatively new here, but from what I understand, this has really been something that's, we've had a relationship, right? The Office of Economic Development, Friends of Seville Downtown have had a relationship uh, for some time and done a lot of these things sort of in, in concert with each other. Um, this agreement was really just a way to help formalize things yes. um, in a way that works well for the city, um, puts a mechanism in place that the city can provide some more direct assistance mm -hmm. uh, for the work that Friends is doing and has some specific things that we want to do. Um, I want to touch on some, a couple of things that you really hit on briefly. Um, I've got to tell you that the new website and the interactive map is just amazing. Um, People have already talked to us about it. Um, it. You can go in there, you can take a look, you can really get a lot of information about a lot of different points of interest. Shops, mm -hmm. restaurants, event spaces, I mean, you name it, it's there. Uh, and it's done in a very engaging, easy to process mm -hmm. format. So you can also tell if you're on the downtown mall or someplace else in the downtown area, you want to see what's right there around you. It's very, very easy to do that uh, in the website itself and using that interactive map. So that has been a great tool. Uh, I think it's been beneficial not only for our residents that come down here, our visitors, but I think it's also really helped the businesses uh, to better connect with those that are coming here into the area that maybe aren't as familiar with it as they would be. We've got some great kiosk signage and great kiosk maps uh, that we just went through the process, like you said, of doing a refresh on those and they look great. Um, and they link directly to the interactive uh, map page. But there's also something to be said. We're, we're so technology driven, mm -hmm. right? We, we all take a look at this, this phone that we carry around in our pockets all the time. And so to have that type of interactiveness in a device that we're all very familiar with and have very easy access to, I think has just been uh, really outstanding. But the agreement itself really just formalizes what has been a good relationship mm -hmm. and what continues to be a good relationship. I know there's a lot of um, great things that are on the horizon. You've, you've talked about a few of them. Um, I don't know how much you want to pull back the curtain on, uh, on some of those, but we're excited about some of the things that are upcoming uh, as well. 
Oh, th well, thank you. And thank you for kind of elaborating a little bit more on the map. That is an incredible resource that I hope people know about. It's something we're very proud of. Um, I have to give a lot of credit to our operations manager, Hannah Keller, who's, who did all the research for those thousand businesses. You can find websites, social media handles, addresses, and you can filter by, like Matt said, shopping, dining, um, services, and look and see kind of physically where you are on the downtown mall. It's an incredible resource. It's on the wayfinding kiosks. It is also on, um, we have a physical downtown map that is out in area hotels, which is a QR code that links to that as well. So really fantastic. Um, and then Matt and I alluded to some of the things we have upcoming. Um, if we have time, we'll talk about them a little bit later in this interview. Uh, but um, you could sort of teed me up for my next question is, Matt's been here for about a year, but he's worked in economic development for many years um, and have seen a lot of things. What is what do you think is the competitive advantage for downtown Charlottesville? What makes this place special and unique? I think, I think there's a few things. Um, the one thing that really stands out to me um, is that there is no place else like the downtown mall. I mean, there just isn't anything that is to that scope and that scale. I mean, it's, it's the largest pedestrian mall uh, outdoor pedestrian mall in the U.S. Um, I think back to uh, before I even had any idea that I would eventually land here like I am now. Um, I was in town about, I guess it was about seven or eight years ago now for uh, a conference in the spring, and that was my first experience visiting the downtown mall. The conference was at the Omni. We stayed there, and of course, like anybody that's in town, when you have some free time, you go out and experience the mall, and I was just just as somebody visiting, I was blown away by just the whole nature of it. I mean, you've got great scenery. You've got the bricks that make it feel very historic. You've got these historic buildings. But you still have lots of really cool modern places that are in there. And I think that's something that is, I think Charlottesville has really embraced both the historic nature of the downtown area with the modern possibilities that come along with what people are looking for nowadays in their entertainment uh, type of things, in their shopping experiences, in their food and beverage um, type of excursions that they like to do. Um, and I just, when I think about some of the different places that I've not only worked, but also just had an opportunity to visit, um, I don't know that there's any place else that quite has the same blend of all of those elements in one thing, like the downtown area does. Um, so I really think that that's a huge advantage for the city of Charlottesville. Um, I think it's, it's something that continues to draw people back and has that potential to really just draw people in. Um, and it's not any one segment of a population either, right. right? There's stuff down here on the downtown mall and in the downtown area for college age uh, students that are here, maybe they're at UVA or one of the other area colleges and they're, they're coming in, they want to do something fun uh, for younger families, for older people like myself who don't, you know, the kids are out of the house now. Um, I mean, there's something literally for everybody in every age, in every demographic uh, down here. And um, I think those are just, when you put all of those individual pieces together, you can get a lot of those individual pieces and maybe one or two things in a number of different places. Uh, but you don't have it all sort of combined into one place like you do here in the downtown area of Charlottesville. We completely agree, and, and as we think about branding downtown, that is a something almost that makes it challenging because it has so much, and it, I, you're so right to touch on that. Both historical and modern piece is something we talk about a lot, as well as it being there is something for everyone throughout you know, a full day on the mall. You could, you could have runners running down and getting coffee, and then people at the escape room or catching a show at the Paramount or at Fridays After Five or... First Friday is the art show, and so there, there is just something for everyone in the community. Um, and you know, Charlottesville should be very proud and continue to, to see success there. Um, shifting gears a little bit, so you and I have been working together um, 
on applying to be a Main Street, for an official Main Street Virginia designation. What are the benefits of Virginia Main Street, um, of, of the Virginia Main Street program for Charlottesville? Sure. So just very quickly, for those who aren't familiar, Virginia Main Street comes off of the Main Street USA program, which was formed back in like 1980, roughly, mm -hmm. uh, and really was an attempt to embrace um, a preservation-focused economic growth thing for um, downtown and Main Street areas where they had seen sort of suburban flight mm. take place and some of those things had moved out of those uh, more historic and traditional areas. So what that type of program means for the downtown area, I think I really would sum it up in access to resources, um, right. whether it's um, training and marketing and things along those lines or whether it's some financial resources, um, programmatic things that can come along with that. I think when you're also involved with Virginia Main Street and you actually go through uh, one of the two-year cohorts that we're uh, getting ready to apply for, um, you build those relationships with other communities. So you create that network and really get engaged with a network of other communities that have similar opportunities um, and similar challenges and you say okay well what worked for you all and then you see how some of those things can apply in your community as well and vice versa sometimes you have things that you really hit on in your community that you're able to share with others um, I think there's a lot of really interesting uh, programs that they have as a part of Virginia Main Street that focus again on how you can build upon the historic preservation nature of what you want from a Main Street area to keep it sort of like it is, um, while still encouraging ongoing economic growth and development. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the reasons that we're interested and, and really excited to partner with Friends of Downtown, uh, Seaville Downtown, on um, this particular program uh, going forward. So I really like that you keep talking about both the history and sort of the modern going forward because I, I think that is something that's really special and we talk a lot about the magic of the downtown mm -hmm. mall and so a program that fits and that encourages us to think in both of those ways is a really good fit. Um, the other thing is like sort of we, we, we in Charlottesville don't need to reinvent the wheel in terms of how we're approaching some of our challenges or areas of opportunity. Um, so that's really exciting. I also think Charlottesville is, the mall is so unique. It's, there's other communities probably could learn from what we've seen here in Charlottesville. So um, as you kind of alluded to, it's a little bit of a long process with those two years, but um, I've obviously done a lot of research on, you know, where, why we would participate in that. And the back end of that means that there's, that's where you're going to find most of your grant money for mm -hmm. Main Street programs in right. Virginia. Um, and def just resources to support and, and connect. And we actually already do that in, um, you know, we had the the director of the Lynchburg Downtown Association join us at TomTom, Tom, and we've learned a lot from her. Like mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier, we're emulating some of the th areas where they've seen success, like the downtown holiday lights, like some programs we've gotten from other main streets, like Elves and Seaville or Peppermint Trail. So really excited to be part of that and continue to learn more from other downtowns across the country. Yeah. Um, in that same kind of vein. So the downtown mall is coming up on its 50th anniversary. Uh, from your perspective, how might we prepare for that um, and, and celebrate that as a community? Sure. Um, I think there's a few things. One, I think it's good for people to really, uh, they embrace the downtown mall and sort of what it, what it is and appreciate the process uh, in some respects, but I don't know that they really totally understand the history. Mm -hmm. I know that was one of the things uh, when I was originally coming here, I sort of thought the downtown mall had been sort of in its current state for, you know, Forever. for a very long time. Okay. <laughs> it was sort of designed that way originally, but it wasn't far from it. I mean, I remember the first time I saw pictures of vehicles actually on sitting on main street. Um, and I was like, wow, that's right. Like where I walk right now. Um, so I would say really sort of dig in a little bit to the history of that. Um, I know that there's some different resources that are um, through the Historical Resources Committee that's part of Neighborhood mm -hmm. Development Services with the city. 
Um, again, you can go to charlottesville.gov and you can take a look and do some searches for that. But there are some resources there that show old photographs that talk about some of the old studies. Um, another thing I would point at, uh, point out again, um, is there is actually a new historic walking tour Mm -hmm. um, that there's a map and everything is sort of is very well laid out is available online but there's also hard paper copies uh, if somebody wants to stop by the office they can stop by our office neighborhood development services at city hall and that really just gives people places mainly in the downtown area of charlottesville where they can go get out we're getting into fall this is the perfect time to get out perfect. and get about and um, then also provides information about some of the historical markers, where to look for that type of thing. But I really think in order to fully appreciate the present of the downtown mall and the future of the downtown mall, you also have to really be able to pull in the past and sort of what that development was so you can continue to see how that development moves forward. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's just a kind of another point of you really can come and spend an entire day on mm -hmm. the downtown mall and that's a free activity, um, free for the community, right? It's not just spending money and you know, it's, you can come and shop and dine and go and see arts and entertainment, but there's also ways that you can just kind of explore the space in of itself and learn about that. So incredibly excited um, about that. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention about the 50th anniversary that's sort of neat is it coincides with Virginia's 250th anniversary. Um, so next month on the Downtown Spotlight, we're going to be joined by Courtney Caucasian from Tourism, um, who can tell us a little bit about how we can promote the Downtown Mall and get ready for when those two things come together and we can potentially expect a lot of history, probably mostly history-related tourists mm -hmm. um, throughout that entire year. So. And I think also adding to that, the fact that the downtown mall was just placed on the National Register of Historic Places mm -hmm. is going to play a huge part in that. Uh, a lot of people like to just visit places that are on that register. Um, and so since it just showed up this year, it's going to mean there's more people that are going to be interested in coming here to check it out. That's a, that's a, a really good point. I think sometimes as locals, we forget that Charlottesville is such a destination for history buffs, right? Between UVA and Monticello, which are just right down the road, the mall is, is situated right in the middle of that, and people are going to come and want to know about the history of Charlottesville as an old city. The mall is pretty new, but you know Main Street and, and what it's been is very old, and so we're excited to, to welcome mm -hmm. all of those tourists here to the mall. Well, Matt, before we wrap up, is there anything else you want to tell me about what's happening in, in economic development? Did I miss anything? No, I think you covered things. I just want to say I'm I'm excited. I know you're going to talk some more. You've got some other guests coming. Um, but I think one of the things we talked some about earlier, what are some of the things that make the downtown mall special? And I really do think that the different events that happen in this downtown mm -hmm. area um, has a lot to do with really activating and drawing people in. Um, there's all types of different events. There are events down here at the downtown mall that you just won't see someplace else as well. Um, so that's a huge part of things. Uh, we're excited um, to continue to support the activities of Friends of Seaville downtown, all the businesses that are down here, and uh, look forward to uh, what the next 50 years hold as well. And Matt, where can people go to learn more about economic development? Sure, you can go to charlottesville.gov slash E-C-O-D-E-V, or you can just go to charlottesville.gov and you can just look up economic development. We've got information about our programs, some reports that we've done, our annual report that's out there. Um, some people will find that interesting and has all of our contact information as well. Okay, great. Thank you. And make sure you get on the, the Office of Economic Development newsletter, um, as well as the Friends of Seville newsletter, of course, so that you don't miss anything that's happening downtown. Matt, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's been fantastic talking with you. Um, I'd like to welcome up our next guest, Thanks. Ryan Becklin, the owner of Botanical Fair on the Downtown Mall. Hey, hello. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. I'm really works. excited. Thanks um, for having me. <laughs> Botanical is one of the coolest spots on the Downtown Mall. It's a personal <laughs> favorite restaurant. I can't get enough of your sweet potatoes. Uh, so really excited to talk to you about that and a cool festival you have coming up. Um, first, tell us a little bit about Botanical and why you started the restaurant. Yeah, uh, well, thank you for that. I just cut like a, 
hundreds of sweet potato <laughs> bits earlier before I came here. So yeah, it's a popular one. Um, and we've had, yeah, just a great time being on the mall. I started botanical basically right at the tail end of the pandemic. Um, so we're about two and a half years in and I did it because I could see, so I moved from DC. I was in DC during the pandemic and then I, decided I wanted to come here and I could see that there was lots of vegan options in places, but not a fully, you know, vegan restaurant. Uh, and so I was hoping that if we put one, you know, somewhere in the downtown area that, uh, there would be enough demand for it. And thankfully it, it, that's been <laughs> correct. And people have responded really positively to it. It's just been like beyond my wildest, what I would have expected it would be. Uh, and then, Within the first, within a year of opening, we were also open the bar out in Crozet, so we have a rooftop bar there now too, which has been great. I wasn't planning on doing both right right away, but it worked out that way, and uh, we've been just rolling with it. It's How <laughs> how's that been? That sounds crazy. Yeah, it's been it's definitely a lot. Um, anyone who like you know, owns a business, in particular a restaurant, there's, it's a lot of things that are constantly moving, things always breaking, there's like just always stuff to do, but it's been great. Uh, we're so lucky. I've had such a good staff um, that's basically, I mean, almost all of them have been with me since the beginning, or if not, you know, they came on later, but that was just because we were growing and needed more people, and uh, we, yeah, I've been really lucky with that. And we've been lucky that there's been a demand <laughs> for it. But yeah, I mean, Crozet in particular, I live out in Crozet, so I had a little more motiv motivation to be out there. And I saw out there that they just needed, you know, maybe some healthier options. Mm -hmm. And there's just not a lot of food out there, unfortunately, yet, or a retail space. So it's, it's growing. But yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. We love it. <laughs> so I think people are often really surprised, myself being one of them, is that how how good the food is for if for a non-vegan yeah. right like yeah. i am a very much a meat eater yeah. um but i love botanical what made you passionate yeah. about <laughs> vegan food and wanting to do that as a business yeah yeah i mean i think that was part of what we set out to do was to you know be appealing to just people who like good food regardless of whether it's vegan or not and um that's certainly we've seen that that people you know like it even if they don't typically eat vegan food and unfortunately vegan food has gotten a lot of <laughs> there's a it's been it's taken a while for people to I think like understand how to cook vegetables in a really <laughs> like delicious way uh and that's part of yeah that's just been some of the issues so I think a lot of vegan food has gotten a bad rep for just being kind of flavorless or like not filling those kind of things um but yeah I've just been I my previous place that I worked was a vegan restaurant too so I did a lot of research learned a lot there uh, about it and then I just love cooking myself so I got really into that realm of uh, cooking vegan specifically and applied all that to the restaurant there's a lot of like Asian flavors within the food mm -hmm. because that just goes so well with vegan food which is often lacking in like that umami or the kind of you know, satisfying flavors you get from meat. So, yeah, so we use a lot of tamari and, like, miso, things like that, and it really just, yeah, it worked out. <laughs> it right makes now, it taste good. I'm assuming you're vegan. Are you vegan? I am, <laughs> yeah. And how long have you been vegan? Um, I honestly don't know exactly. It's probably been eight or nine years at this point. Uh, I was vegetarian for a really long time, and then when I was a kid, you know, it wasn't even, I didn't really know what, vegan sure. was or anything I just knew when I was young I like really liked animals and <laughs> didn't want to eat right. them and so then uh, as I got older I you know researched it more I learned a lot about all the other you know environmental implications and health uh, implications and so yeah then I switched over fully and I'm just excited to bring you know more vegan food out to the community and have those options available. <laughs> well, it's such a great um, kind of education for the community as well. Yeah. Um, what's your most popular menu item? Uh, our number one by far is the crunchy cauliflower bowl. That's definitely the big one that we, I, I was, when we opened, I was like, I have no clue what will be, what's going to be the most popular thing. But 
That has definitely been it. The sweet potato bowl is probably close second. Um, the bowls are definitely the most popular. But yeah, we sell, I don't know what the numbers are in it, but we sell well, you know, several thousand of those a year for sure. And I like that you have healthy um, kids meal options. I took my ba- my 10 month old and was <laughs> feeding her like sweet potato and rice yeah. and she loved it too. And so it really is a great family spot and yeah. for everyone. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, and we're so lucky to have Botanical here on the downtown mall as part of a, a really vibrant restaurant scene. Um, right now you're working on a cool event. I believe it's yeah. the first. <laughs> the first? The first since prior to COVID. There have been past okay. Veg Fest here. Veg Fest. Mm-hmm. So um, we're here to talk today with Ryan about Veg Fest. Tell us all about it, yeah. what it is, how, how it started, who's going to be there. Yeah. Uh, so we are putting on VegFest this year. It is the first one since years ago prior to COVID. And I think, I'm not even totally sure. I might have stopped like just before COVID even um, started. But yeah, it used to, it's had several different iterations, but um, like there was just a vegetarian one, I think too, but it's a fully vegan festival. We're going to have a full, well, I should say first, it's free event, so open to the public totally. It's going to be at X Park, and it's this Sunday from 12 to 6, so the 15th. And, yeah, it's been <laughs> it's like a crazy amount of work for, you know, a six-hour festival. But, right. you know, that's the hope is that it goes off well and we get the word out and that we can make it self-sustaining, you know, for the most part. So each year we can just do it and keep getting you know more vendors and different people uh, invested in the festival but yeah it's going to be a big we're going to have the main stage with a bunch of speakers we're going to have one of uh, our favorite drag performers that does a lot of drag shows at botanical will be doing a performance down on the stage there we're going to have a vegan pie eating contest so (laughs) that's so fun (laughs) yeah so what kind of pie um I think we're going to do apple, (laughs) but we... How do I enter? Yeah, so the plan is that it's just one pie as fast as you can eat it, so it doesn't get, like, out of hand and kind of gross, (laughs) but it's just one pie as fast as you can eat it, and uh, that'll be on the main stage, too, so that, the big thing for that sign up, like, if you want to do it, it's just going to be kind of first come, first serve that day. I think we'll probably do, like, 10 people-ish, so... If you want to do it, sign up right away when you get there. <laughs> but um, what but time will the pie eating contest be? I think it's around three thirty. Yeah, we have so we have a, you know a whole schedule of stuff going on the main stage all day. And, and, and on the main stage, right? You mentioned yeah. the drag show, but also nutritionists. Yeah, or we're going to have speakers that are going to be uh, a lot of people in the medical field that are talking about yeah, wow. basically different. You know how they came to like. There's honestly a big movement of physicians that are you know essentially prescribing plant-based diets to their patients and that'll definitely be a component so education wise we're going to be doing that uh we'll also have like an animal activist there uh just kind of yeah everyone in the, in the vegan world and then yeah a bunch of vendors lots of seaville ones lots of richmond vendors too um richmond has a really big veg fest so we're not going to be quite at that level yet but maybe one day and yeah it's over it's 50 plus like vendors so it'll be pretty wow. full at X and yeah thankfully we had a bunch of people apply and uh hopefully the turnout is right <laughs> that's good. incredible I mean that's like that's like the farmer's market um so I didn't realize this but there, it sounds like there's veg fest across the country there are um yeah. and maybe it had been here before mm-hmm. uh how did you get involved and who else is involved in yeah. The planning yeah so we got involved so I basically I've wanted to do it since we opened um two and a half years ago, but because I knew it had happened here in the past and there had been different groups that had handled it. Um, But as soon as we opened, I was like, well, we're the vegan place in town, so I definitely want to put, you know, all of our energy behind bringing it back. But I was a little busy doing, you know, getting things moving and starting the bar out in Crozet. So uh, then I was approached by uh, just a local, her name's Mary Cheryl, and she... uh, asked me about bringing it back and she wanted to you know work to bring it back and I was like yeah we're in we definitely want to we've been wanting to do it so uh, her and I have been working closely to just get it going again and it's basically been us and a lot of the staff at Botanical has been helping too which has been great we have a lot of people who have these different skill sets that I do not have um, and have been handling a lot of the all the background stuff like the social media and you know 
all the communications. There's so many emails <laughs> involved with stuff like that. So yeah, we've, it's been a team effort for sure. Uh, but we've learned a lot. <laughs> I'm sure it's not going to be perfect, especially it's our first one, but we'll see how, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. And then next year, I'm sure we'll be even smoother. <laughs> well, it's perfect, perfect time of year, right? The weather's yeah. perfect. I think you'll have a huge turnout, um, yeah. in this community and That's really <laughs> excited to see. And I, and you mentioned that amount of work that so Friends of Seabell does a ton of free community events as well. Yeah. And yeah. I definitely underestimated the mm -hmm. behind the scenes work that goes into those types of things. Um, yeah. Sounds like it's a real labor of love for you and for your it team. Is, and it's definitely. such a gift to the community. So yeah. um, I would encourage all vegetable lovers and Charlottesville downtown yes. lovers to come out to VegFest um, on Sunday. It is another great example of the diversity of things that we offer down here. Um, and I really appreciate you coming on. Is there anything else you want to tell us about Botanical or about VegFest? Where can we get more information? Um, I think we covered everything. The only thing I didn't mention at VegFest, too, we'll have a kids area, so it's definitely very kid-friendly. And, yeah, the big thing is, so it's on Instagram, it's at Seville VegFest. If you want to look into, there's, like, the so social media especially has tons of vendor spotlights. So if you're like curious who's going to be there and things like that, you can just go on our Instagram and see all that. And then uh, veganrootsfest.org is the website for it. So that has like our schedule lineup for the day and a bunch of information about it. But yeah, it's at Ix Park and weather's looking good so far. So hopefully it'll be a great day. Out there. So website, veganroots, veganrootsfest.com, yeah. social media, VegFest. Yeah, Veg Seville. at Seville Veg Fest. Seville Veg yeah. Fest. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. Check out all the vendors. Ryan, thank you for doing yeah, such cool stuff. Thanks for having us on the first one. That was exciting. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, really appreciate Ryan be being here today. I'd like to bring up our next guest, Andrea Jacobs, the festival director for Seville Sobroso. Hi, Andrea. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having us. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> I was really, I have been in communications with some of your board members and people working on this festival. We are thrilled um, that you're moving to the downtown mall. Yes, I know. This is very exciting for us. Our, uh, the festival, this is our 12th uh, festival here in Charlottesville. Okay. And over the past years, it has just been growing and growing, and it's been amazing the amount of support that we've received from the community. Uh, so we are very excited to move to Ting. Uh, it's allowed us to double our vendors, double our sponsors, wow. uh, and so it's going to be a lot of big. It's going to be a big fiesta. <laughs> so, backing up a little bit for those watching that might not be familiar with the event. So, so tell us about what is Seville Sabrosa? Yeah. Sabroso. Of course, Sabroso. Uh, yes, Seville Sabroso is a cultural festival of art, food, music from Latin American countries. Uh, we try to pr represent a lot of diverse Latin American countries and their traditions uh, in either food, art, or in uh, music and dance. So uh, it will be on September 21st with nine hours of lots of dancing, lots of music. Uh, it's hopefully going to feel like a big Latino block party that people are going to be able to come and partake and kind of see the energy that the Latino community uh, shares uh, with each other. And now we want to share it with the rest of Charlottesville and surrounding areas. That's so exciting. And again, such an asset for downtown. What, um, how did this, you said it's your 12th year in Charlottesville. Yeah. How did the festival come about? I uh, saw so our, found, our founder, Fanny Schmildy, who is also the founder of Sin Barreras, who is the organization that hosts this festival. Uh, she started this uh, festival 12 years ago at Incarnation Church, um, a Catholic church here in town. And it was such a big hit that then our co-founder, Estela Knott from Lua Project, uh, partnered with her and they basically were able to expand the festival to McGuffey uh, Art Center for a while. Um, and then it became bigger than McGuffey. And so then we were at Ix Park for a few years. Um, 
uh, and then at X Park, it grew even more. And wow. so uh, for the last couple of years, we had a hiatus during COVID, but for the last couple of years, we've had it at Washington Park, which has also expanded uh, the crowd attendance. And so now we're moving to Ting to help Sin Barreras uh, kind of grow the festival also partake in announcing that Sin Barreras has been the organization here in town that has been hosting this festival for many, many years for the Latino community. So tell us a little bit more about the, the organization itself for those that aren't familiar. Uh, yeah, Sin Barreras is a um, immigrant, uh, Latino immigrant focused uh, organization that provides services for uh, DACA children, anyone who is looking for assistance in their citizenship. They have helped over 100 people get their citizenship here in, uh, in Charlottesville. Um, they also offer educational services. If, you are, if we are a new, a new member to the community and are wanting to learn English, they offer English ESL classes. Um, it is a very diverse organization. They've actually expanded into the Waynesboro area as well. Uh, and so uh, it has, again, been a very uh, fruitful organization that has provided a lot of diverse services to the immigrant population depending on what they need. They also offer health services, helping immigrants be able to get their preventative care uh, health um, um, procedures done uh, to at a low cost or no cost at all in some cases. So um, so yeah, we, we've tried to we've tried to be we we're kind of been in the back scene supporting uh, the community and making sure that our immigrant community is just as fruitful as uh, the rest of the community here in Charlottesville. And how long has the organization been in Charlottesville? Uh, Twelve years. Okay, so the same the same as the the festival. Yes. yes. Well, um, just like we were saying with Ryan, it, it is a huge amount of work to put on a festival like this, yeah. in addition to all of the other things that the nonprofit is doing. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about some of, you mentioned there's lots of vendors and lots of performances. Yeah. What kinds of things can people expect that day? Uh, yeah, sure. The uh, the Sivo Sabroso Festival is actually a passion project of the volunteers of Sin Barreras. Uh, so this is all the volunteer-led uh, planning committee and day of kind of event. Um, we um, solicit our sponsors, uh, our local businesses. We try to uh, bring in a lot of our Latino owned uh, small businesses here in the community right. to participate, uh, to provide that diverse you know, community because I mean, Glen America is so big and massive that there is a lot of representation from many countries. Um, for instance, this year we're gonna have acts from Peru, we're gonna have uh, acts from Mexico, uh, El Salvador, Bolivia, um, and then we're also going to have food that is representative of Argentina, Mexico, uh, Nicaragua, Guatemala, uh, Costa Rica, uh, and so we're very, very excited um, that uh, Ting allows us to really expand and bring in more of the small Latino-owned businesses. Um, I'm so looking forward to this. I have been to the festival in the past. The food was delicious. The costumes were beautiful. The performances were yes. truly fantastic. So would encourage everyone to come. Um, you've mentioned, of course, we've talked about it, it's moving to Ting. Why, why this year did you decide to make that choice to, to move to the downtown mall? Um, this year, uh, well, because uh, we have outgrown all of the parks in Charlottesville and Albemarle County. Uh, the insane. attendance has surpassed over 4,000 people, and so we've had to, in order to accommodate everybody comfortably, our, along with our sponsors and our small businesses and our festival attendants, uh, we felt that the Team Pavilion would provide us that uh, space and, uh, and ability to give more of the community. So we will try to, um, we're trying to scale it up, uh, but of course with that comes some operational overhead costs. So this year it will be our first year that we'll be charging to come to the festival. Uh, in the past it has been a, a free community event, mm -hmm. but uh, unfortunately we've uh, been unable to carry that operational cost uh, at Sin Barreras, so we are asking the community for support. Um, because we need you know, more support from our local businesses, more support from the community. Uh, so we will be charging. It will be $10 for adults, $5 for teenagers between 12, 13 and 17, and kids 12 and under are gonna be free uh, to make it uh, feasible for families as well. 
It sounds like a very fair price for everything that you've mentioned and certainly a worthy cause. Where can the community go to buy tickets? Uh, you can go to Cibo Sabroso on Facebook uh, to find the latest information and ticket pricing. You can also go to Tink Pavilion. They also uh, have a link to our ticket uh, system. Um, and you can, uh, Cibo uh, Sabroso Facebook is probably the best uh, place to go to get like the latest information of that. Okay. Uh, but like I said, again, it's going to be a big fiesta. Like we're, we're, we're trying to make this like the, one of the biggest central Virginia like fiesta parties to come and check out uh, for, for us. Now, and you can buy tickets day of as well? Yes, yes. We will be closing the pre-purchasing tickets on Thursday, September 19th. Okay. Uh, so after that, you'll have to come on the day of to purchase your ticket and come and enjoy nine hours of entertainment, food, artisan work. I mean, I'm wearing a huipil, which is uh, uh, something that some of our vendors will be selling. Beautiful. Uh, so it will be beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful event. Uh, we're very excited. So we one one particular reason that we at Friends of Seville is excited is because bringing this event to the mall, like you talked about, makes it a bit of a block party. Yes. Uh, about how many people are you expecting, and how can we kind of prepare and, and help you on the mall make that successful? Oh, well, I'm hoping we will surpass our attendance last year. Or last year we had about four thousand people. Uh, come through the festival, so we're hoping this year will be between 4,000 and 5,000 people to come and enjoy and like just sit. You can you can bring your blankets because you know Ting has a nice grassy area and your lawn chairs, and you can sit and hunker down and just enjoy the show uh, and walk around and meet some of our sponsors and talk to some of our local Latino business owners and get to know them as well. Uh, and of course, just support uh, Sin Barreras and help us continue to host this festival because it has, like I said, is a passion project of ours. Uh, the volunteers love hosting this event. Um, we love encouraging all of our Latino community to come out and showcase their talents and their and what they bring to Central Virginia and Charlottesville and all the surrounding counties. So. Um. I want to point out what a triumph it is to have 4,000 attendees in a city of just over 40,000. Um, that's a huge success. You can tell that it is a passion from your volunteers and a really um, just, it's something that makes Charlottesville so special is the amount of diversity and things that we have access to here. Um, we encourage everyone to come out and support this event. It's at Ting, September 21st from from 12 to... Uh, uh, from, one to t uh, from 1 to 9, 30. 1 to 9. So you can come and eat all of your meals here, dancing, buy, shop. Yeah, actually, I have one correction. It's actually 1 to 10. I'm sorry. 1 to 10 p.m. 1 to 10 p.m. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Friends of Sea will also have the downtown train running that day, doing some promotion for the event. Um, yeah. And we cannot wait to come and be part of this fiesta. Yes, please come be. Come um, partake. Thank you so much, Andrea, for being here today, for being one of our first guests on the Downtown Spotlight. Uh, we wish you the best of luck at your festival and, and cannot wait to celebrate with you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for tuning in today for this first episode of the Downtown Spotlight. If you love Downtown Charlottesville and support the efforts of Friends of Seaville, please be sure to visit our website, www.friendsofseaville.org. Um, where you can donate, you can join as a member, or, um, or learn more about how to volunteer. Um, we're currently looking for sponsors for Magic on the Mall, as well as for train drivers on the Downtown Express train, which is now running every Saturday morning, leaving from Central Place at 10 a.m. So families, be sure to come out and take a free ride on the Downtown Express. Um, tune in and join us again next month when we will be joined by Courtney Caucasian to talk about tourism on the downtown mall. Thank you again. We'll see you soon.